Hello, my name is Rachel Jones and this is my vlog for Library 100. Right now, I'm a biological sciences major here at Clemson. As a freshman, figuring out what I want to major in has been a qu quite a challenge. Growing up, coming to college, and making choices on my own has been a very difficult part in coming to Clemson. This relates directly to the new student dialogue I attended. I attended the new student dialogue titled, They Say Age is Only a Number, a dialogue on the privilege of age. People say that age is only a number, but in American culture, your age either entitles you or restricts you from having certain rights. Over the years, age has become a topic that is at the center of social constructs of American society. With the majority of the America, American population in charge of their own thoughts, who is to say that the ages marking these rights are appropriate? I believe that the New Student Dialogue is a part of Library 100 because the instructors of this course want us to learn that dialogue is an important part of life. Learning to have an active conversation with a group of people sparks dialogue and discussion, and you can learn many things and share your own thoughts. You can have deba debates, discussions, and normal conversations. These are all part of everyday life, and learning to have an active voice and speaking your mind allows you to learn more and become more knowledgeable. As the dialogue first started, the instructors made our group participate in an icebreaker activity. We had to write down on an index card what our name was, our current age, and how old we believe we are when we actually become an adult. In society, 18 years old marks that you become an adult, but is this actually how everyone feels? At 18, you're going to college, but you still don't pay bills, and you don't, you don't have as many responsibilities as you would if you were, say, 21 with a job. Next, we had to introduce ourselves to as many people in the room as possible, but there was a twist. The very per first person we introduced ourselves to told us our name the ages, and the ages they wrote on the card, and then we switched cards. Then the next person we talked to, we had to introduce ourselves as the last person we talked to and remember the ages they believed in. This was a memory game. And for 10 minutes, we had to go around introducing ourselves as other people and remembering the ages that they had said. At the end, we went around the room and introduced ourselves as the card that we held in our hand. It was a challenge to make sure that no one had their own card. The trick was making sure that the ages were correct. At the beginning of this activity, I thought it was quite awkward and pointless, but as time went on and I continued introducing myself to people, I began to understand why we were doing this. Every single person in the room had a different perception of at what age we actually become an adult. One thing that I found quite odd was the fact that we had a 32-year-old man in the room with a bunch of 18 to 20-year-olds. He is in the process of getting an education just like the rest of us. The thing that I found quite weird is that he chose to attend this dialogue, and I wondered why he would choose one on age when he knew there would be a bunch of younger people in the room with him. During this dialogue, it was obvious that no one really wanted to be there. Spending two hours on a Friday afternoon doing something totally involuntary was not what we wanted to be doing. As our instructors started asking questions, no one wanted to speak up and respond. The instructors were up front and told us that it would be best for us to participate because if we didn't, it would be a very long two hours. I really believe that this got through to some of the people because the discussion became more active. At the beginning of the session, there was, wasn't much dialogue being achieved at all. No one wanted to talk. No one wanted to be there. I mean, can you blame us? It was 125 on a Friday afternoon with the homecoming game to follow on that Saturday. We all wanted to be out doing our own things. As things began to loosen up, people started to talk, and we actually started having a conversation. Now, whether or not it was true dialogue is hard to say, because the conversation didn't flow as smoothly as a conversation would. There were long pauses of silence before someone else would pick up and start talking. In our dialogue, there were both active and reserved voices. There was one guy who had no problem talking or sharing how he felt about age. 
Others were, were reserved and held back their feelings towards what they were talking about. There were more reserved voices than active voices, and I believe this was because we didn't really want to be there. It was somewhat awkward because in a room of a bunch of people that we didn't know, plus once again, it was a Friday afternoon. In our group, my role was sort of small. I participated when I felt comfortable, but I was definitely one of the reserved voices. I don't really like to speak in front of large groups of people or share my ideas. I don't have a fear of speaking around other people. I just feel sometimes that my opinions don't need to be shared. Next, we did another activity where we got in groups of four and were handed a bunch of little pieces of paper. Some papers had countries on them and the others had what age something becomes legal in that country. For example, if the piece of paper said voting age 18, we all knew it was the United States. We were given time to match up the countries with the different ages, and then we went over the answers. One thing I learned is that we stereotype countries. One of the papers said 12 to legally work, and we all thought this was China because this is a place where child labor is needed. You hear horror stories about little kids working until their hands start to bleed, and you automatically stick the idea with that country. In reality, China was not the country in which you, had to be, you could be 12 to have a job. As I was completing the, the assignments for Library 100, I honestly thought they were a pain. Yes, they allow us to become more acquainted with the university. Alcohol EDU allowed us to learn the negative aspects of alcohol and how we shouldn't just turn to alcohol as a coping mechanism. One thing I didn't like about Alcohol EDU is some of the questions in the survey didn't give us an option saying that we didn't drink at all. I don't think people should just assume that every college kid goes out and drinks. I have never been drunk. I didn't drink before I came to college, and that hasn't changed since I have arrived here. I want to be successful in life and achieve everything I can. Alcohol can wait. Now is the time to learn and get a good education. Partying can come later in life. I believe that this rel is related to our, my new student dialogue that I attended. Even though the legal drinking age in the United States is 21, many teenagers drink illegally. On a college campus, underage drinking can be a huge problem, but it is irrational to think that every single student goes out and drinks. Talking about the drinking age and learning how people felt about it allowed my mind to become more open. I believe the new student dialogue was a mechanism to show college student students that dialogue is important. Talking to other people and learning how they feel about certain aspects of life allows you to have an open mind to others' opinions and incorporate those into how you feel about certain aspects of life. Thank you.